glass breaks. As we continue here at Harper Volkswagen, we say hello to our friend Austin Price, VolQuest.com, part of the On3 Network, Tennessee, Florida Week. Austin, have you sensed it locally that it's Tennessee, Florida Week? Yeah, it's the uh, it's the balance between cockiness and fear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's kind of where yep. it's at, right? I mean, like these Tennessee, you know, the Tennessee fans are excited. They they have a lot of belief, but they've seen this movie a time or twelve, and uh, you know, they they know that that Tennessee's kind of had a, a tough time getting over the hump in this game. Um, I, I think I'm gonna write this when I do the prediction on Friday, but like, I'm going to equate this to Tennessee fans are the character Griffin in men in black three, the guy that sees like all the different variable outcomes. And like, you're just hoping this isn't the one where like, you know, the meteor hit the earth and, and, and civilization, as you know, it, you know, you're hoping this is the one where Tennessee finds a way to get a win. This game has big time implications. Um, no, no doubt about it, but recruiting is, is a big one. AP there's, ton of players that have Tennessee and, and, and Florida in their top five. Um, Tennessee and Florida trying to jock for a position to maybe be the, the biggest threat to, to Georgia uh, and Alabama moving forward. Um, what kind of recruits have you heard will be in attendance this, this, this weekend for this game? Well, when you're looking at the 23s, Tennessee will officially host two of them, that being David Hobbs, who's now a five-star on three. Um, and, and then Vice and Lang, the offensive tackle from Alabama. So uh, those are the big two names that are in the 23s. Or, uh, Arian Carter, who uh, has went from, you know, no big-time offers to uh, you name it, they've offered you in a matter of a week. It's been crazy for the kid from Smyrna. Committed to Memphis as a running back. All of a sudden started getting all these Power 5 offers when he sent out linebacker tape. And it started with Vanderbilt a couple of weeks ago. But then if you just go back to last Friday, Auburn Friday, Bama Saturday, USC Sunday, Tennessee, Ole Miss, Kentucky, Michigan, Michigan State, LSU. I mean, like, think about it. Well, we could go at this time. He had none of those. And so, like, his head's swimming a little bit. So, you know, I think there's a chance he comes up uh, Saturday for the game. He's talked to, to Brian Jean-Marie and uh, – and the Tennessee staff, he talked to Josh Heupel, um, you know, when Tennessee offered him uh, early in the week. And so, you know, those are the 23s. The 24s, it's a who's who. I mean, when you think about Boo Carter's coming into town, um, Sammy Brown, Brian Longwell, um, Caleb Beasley, uh, you know, Ryan Wingo. I mean, you're talking about a couple of different five stars in that 24 class, some high end four stars. This is the kind of. Um, game especially for a guy like David Hobbs who is bumping all this stuff up that you know it, the age old adage is you want to have the last visit right well in this instance I think it probably behooves Tennessee to have the first visit because I think the atmosphere especially if Tennessee can get a win I think it really works hand in hand because you know the the, the party on campus between 10 a.m. and potentially with a win 10 p.m. will be would be unbelievable the atmosphere you kind of ride a tsunami wave uh with with the recruits in town and you could ride one with with david hobbs right into landing that kid later in the year um you know because he knows how important he is to rodney garner and the staff austin price is with us from volquest.com joins us every week thanks to rick terry jewelry designs austin what do you think is the most important thing for tennessee to be able to do on saturday to beat florida Be confident. I mean, I, I think that, you know, that's, you know, again, getting across, you know, the hurdle or getting over the hump or whatever adjective you want to use. Um, I think that that is, you know, the most important thing because Tennessee's got talent, you know, but again, it, it, a lot of it is believing. And, you know, you go into this game, Florida's going to walk in here and they're going to think, no matter what we've done the first three weeks, it doesn't matter. We own Tennessee. We own the balls. 16 out of the last 17 years. You know, they beat us six times in 30 years. And so you've got to get across the hump. You've got to, you've got to make them understand, no, not this year. And so I, I think, you know, the, the start to this football game is huge for Tennessee. I think that first quarter is massive. I've said since Sunday that if Tennessee has the lead at the end of the first quarter, I think that's 
gr- a great sign for Tennessee in the football game because I think they have a really chance to extend because I think the confidence level will get ratcheted up. Um, you know, if you have the lead at the end of one, whereas like if you go out, you have some silly fumble and you, you know you put your defense on its you know heels a little bit, having to you know play with a short field and give Florida some reason to get even more confident, then it changes. So I think Tennessee's got to come out, you know, hair on fire, ready to play. Crowd's going to be through the roof, and I think you've got to try to bury the Florida Gators in that first quarter. And I don't mean you got to be up seventeen nothing. But you got to have them on their heels with their head spinning um, in the first quarter. I think that's the most important thing in the football game. Because I think at the end of the day, people want to talk about Cedric Tillman, Jabari Small. I think the crowd impact in this one can have a huge, huge decision because they've not been on the road this year, you know, and, and they've not been, you know, the offense hasn't been super great at home for Florida. What's it going to be like in the road atmosphere if it is, uh, you know, as good as everybody thinks it will be? Last night on Tennessee Prime, AP, it was about the 901, man. We had Jerome Carvin on, Omari Thomas on, uh, two guys in the trenches, two guys that play a lot of football here at Tennessee, and uh, they played in this game uh, last year at the Swamp. Uh, last night during the conversation, what kind of stood out to you uh, as these guys were talking about this matchup between Tennessee and Florida? Well, they're ready to get back out there and play. You know, I mean, you, you – you, you roll through last week at the Akron. You took care of business. You did what you're supposed to do, 63 to six. But you need to, you know, get right back out there, get on the horse again, and, and ride. And I don't think that either one of those players thinks about well, what happened the last 17 years. I don't really think that this team thinks in those terms. Like these are 18 year old kids. Like, you know, and they're as, as somebody told me a few years ago, like. They don't. They don't think about history. Like they're they're in their mind, you know. C. D. Lamb's the goat, and he graduated from Oklahoma a couple of years ago. Like I mean, you know, they don't think about Eric Berry or Casey Clawson or any of those guys that played fifteen, twenty years ago. They just don't. It's, it's just that's just today's modern athlete. So, you know, they're they're kind of in the here and now, and um, at the, you know the 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 nature of the rivalry, the history of the rivalry, Tennessee's lack of success against Florida, that's more for the fans than it is for the players. And so I think they'll get out there and they'll settle into the football game and we'll see what happens. Uh, but uh, I think both those kids, you know, you know, feel like this is a real opportunity coming up Saturday to head into the bye week with a win, undefeated, and uh, with many big things ahead at that point. Austin Price, VolQuest.com with us. Thanks to Rick Terry, Jewelry Designs. Uh, you, you mentioned a couple of players there for Tennessee. I'm sure I'm the first to ask you this week, uh, what do you hear about Cedric Tillman, Jabari Small, uh, Dylan Sampson as well, but uh, health status there at those skill positions, and then maybe this week in practice how Tennessee might prepare based on their availability for Saturday. Well, it certainly feels like today, as of, as, as of this Wednesday, that, that the running backs have a much greater chance to play than, than Cedric Tillman does. Uh, training staff is going to continue to work the rehab. They're going to continue to, you know, stem the ankle for, for Tillman. And the same thing with the ankle for, you know, you know Dylan Sampson and the shoulder for Jabari Small. But it, it just feels like the running backs have a much better shot Um you know, of, of getting on the field in this football game than Cedric Tillman does, you know. But, again, you just never know. I mean, kids heal at different different rates. And so we'll see come Saturday. And if, if Cedric Tillman can't go, it will be on, you know, Brew McCoy and it'll be on Jalen Hyatt to pick up the slack. And then it'll be on, you know, Ramel Keaton and Walker Merrill and other guys to and, and Squirrel White to, you know, pick up, you know, a little bit more slack. So, you know, you can't – I made the joke when we were taping something earlier at BallQuest. You, you can't replace a Gary Bertier, right? <laughs> to quote the to quote the Remember the Titans movie. But, you know, it's very hard, you know, to replace a guy like Cedric Tillman. But Tennessee can fill in voids to where I don't think the, the loss is massive. But there's still going to be a loss there. So you're going to have to figure out ways and be creative. And, and that's what this staff is so good at is being creative, drawing up plays and scheming things up to get their, their, their players open. Hey, P, are you the guest picker for college game day on Saturday? No. <laughs> no. That's, that's what we uh, heard. That's, that's for, I saw a thread uh, on Volquist that said that you were. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Um, 
the uh, uh, you know they they were shooting hard for Dolly, but it doesn't sound like that's going to happen. So I'm interested. I mean, I, you know, you've always got the fallback of, of a Tony Vitello or somebody like that who's already on campus and would be happy to do it. You know, we'll see if if you know they're, they're able to pull anybody else uh, between now and, and and Saturday. But you know, I mean, I think if you're Tennessee fans, if you're Tennessee, you know, you're a, you're a ten point favorite. That line's not moved a whole lot. You continue to see people pick Tennessee to win this game big. Like, you just got to embrace your role as the favorite. You can't I, – I, Tennessee traditionally has been much better as an underdog, but there's no going that direction at this point. You just got to embrace your role as the favorite and roll with it and, you know, see what happens. Pittsburgh game, Tyler Barron was a guy that, that really, really stepped up in, um, in a big-time game, made some great plays in the backfield. Uh, who who's a player on defense that you feel like will have that type of performance that Tyler Barron had? Uh, someone that will step up and, and make a big play or a series of plays? Well, I think it can be Tyler Barron again. I mean, you know, this is a contract year for Tyler Barron. Like, he goes out and he plays well in these big games. All that does is help the, the tape, you know, for him wanting to potentially take a look at going to the NFL. So, you know, I think it can be Tyler Barron. It can definitely be Byron Young, who I don't think has had his best moment of the season yet and is poised to do so. And I think it can be a guy like Jeremy Banks. Ultimately, I think Tennessee's got to tackle well. They've tackled well through the first three weeks, in my opinion. I, I think they've got to do that Saturday because, you know, you can't you can't just, you know, bounce all – you know, you'll, you'll bounce right off Anthony Richardson if you don't wrap him up. And so, you know, th- those are the plays, you know, where – he extends, and you have a chance to get him down, and then you let him break a tackle, and instead of a one-yard run, it turns into an eight-yard run, or instead of a you know forcing a fourth down, it turns into a third-down conversion. You know, I, I think those are the plays that the defense has got to make Saturday. But I mean, when you think about you know what player can step up, I mean, it's it's you know Barron again, it's Young, um, it's it's Jeremy Banks for me. VolQuest.com, Austin Price and his colleagues have you covered all kinds of coverage. We know this week can go back and check out Tennessee Prime, as Swain referenced from last night as well. It's every Tuesday here on the Sports Animal and through the VolQuest stream. So VolQuest.com, part of the On3 network. Austin, we appreciate the time as always. Uh, look forward to seeing what happens this weekend and talking to you about it next week. Sounds good, guys. Appreciate it. 